Hey, good evening. Welcome to the Prayer Points. It's good to have you here today. This is my second attempt to um, get this done because I came out earlier and just as I sat down, the sky was clear and then all of a sudden huge droplets of rain started coming slowing and bum, 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 pretty fast. So obviously on top of my hair, this is called the I've been caught in the rain look. And uh, so I, I went in, prepared my family supper and as quick as the rain came, it left. So I'm out here, things are a little soggy, but that's okay. I just wanted to be out here just to share with you um, the scripture because God's just been pouring it out on me this weekend and this morning and throughout the day. And it all seems to be building around one central theme. So I am sort of doing this even for myself. You're welcome to eavesdrop. But I want to kind of process things out loud that have been poured into me either from the message at church or from my own studies or from what I've been reading or from, you know, it's just come to me over and over with the same focus. And um, so I, and when that happens, I just, I'm like, God, I know you're trying to tell me something. Let me not miss it. Let me grasp it. So that's where I'm at. So today I'm going to process with you and show you kind of how I do this. Um, people are always asking me, how do you do your different Bible studies? This is one of the things I do. When I know that God's putting a repeated theme in front of me, then that tells me, aha, I need to go look at this. I, he's really bringing this to your ear and to your attention, Lord. So I just focus in prayer. So I spent yesterday and the weekend just focusing, Lord, just turn my heart, let me see, because this is something that my husband and I have been talking about for about a week now. It's just that whole restructuring, rebuilding, reassessing, Look, we go going back and looking and make sure there's nothing that we're taking for granted that we need to go back and fix that we've just become too comfortable with. And so we go to church, we, we talk about that, and then we go to church, and our, our minister, Wes, picks up with a sermon, and he preaches from Nehemiah. I don't know if you know anything about Nehemiah. Nehemiah is in the Old Testament. It's Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, so it's before the Psalms. But Nehemiah is a cupbearer who has found favor with the king not the king of Ju judah or jerusalem it was a foreign king but he's a cupbearer for the foreign king and it's obvious throughout the scripture if you just start reading chapter one and two of nehemiah you find out that he's one a man of integrity and two he is a man that obviously is full of joy because whenever he gets news about his people back home in jerusalem he, if, when he goes before the king and he's got that on his heart, it says specifically, the king knew something was going on with Nehemiah because he was never sad before the king. But this day he could tell he was burdened. So he was a man of joy, a man of trust and integrity that obviously this king has a lot of respect for because he, he t trusts him to eat his food before he does to make sure that he doesn't go. And Wes emphasized that yesterday. And it just reiterated, Nehemiah is just a good guy. He's a good guy, but he's the type of guy that gets things done. And it's pretty obvious of that. So here, some people go back to Jerusalem. They visit Jerusalem. The people have just returned, not to the uh, last, not just, like in the last generation, had returned to rebuild, get the come out of captivity and to um, rebuild Jerusalem. So he basically casually says to these guys, Nehemiah says, hey, how's everything back home? And they're like, it's not very good. It's not very good at all. As a matter of fact, the walls are crumbling down. The um, the gates are just left. It's it, it's just it's looking run down. It's looking run down. And Wes said something in his sermon that made me really think twice because he said, when Jerusalem looks run down, then the people look at Jerusalem and they see a run down God. Is that how your God takes care of you? Is that how? And what had really happened is the people started to get casual and did not fulfill their part of the commitment to God. And so Wes posed a question that made me really think, and as he started talking about how um, the steps that Nehemiah took before he realized, it says uh, Nehemiah starts, he realizes there's a problem. Then he realizes, I have to look and see what my part is. What's my part in this? So he confesses and says, Lord, please forgive the sins and the, and the casualty of Jerusalem as well as me, me and my family, don't let us take, don't let, don't, uh, we are so sorry we have sinned against you. And this, and the, and he goes on and then he sit, talks about in order to uh, restore, you have to be able to see what the problem is. Well, all of this was such a good message. 
And I came home and I'm starting to think, Lord, show me what are the things in my life that I've become comfortable in that I am not holding a standard that I need to stand. I am letting this slip because nah, it's, you know, just kind of how it is. And I realized I, a very obvious example. I, I had lost some weight. I was really feeling healthy. My knees were not bothering me anymore. And I'd been praying for healing in my knees. And then all of a sudden I was like, since I got this new job this past year, this past school year, I started eating school lunches because it was more convenient. I quit walking. I sat more. And I'm finding myself getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm look, everything that I worked so hard to be healthier, not just gaining weight, but just being healthier. I'm not eating the, I, I had taken impure foods out of my body and now I'm eating things with preservatives. I'm eating things just because it's convenient. I'm eating, and we were walking, this was kind of how the conversation came before Sunday. My husband and I were talking and we were saying, we had had a wonderful Shabbat time and a wonderful time just together, just restoring our conversation with each other. And we started talking about this restoration and how we missed just talking with each other. We talk, but we don't really talk and set aside a time to talk. So we started talking and we, we said it became a, we used food as an analogy because my husband said, I'm getting to the point where I eat. I, I don't eat because my body needs it. I'm suddenly feeling like I need it. Uh, like I, I, I eat more. It's, and he said he equivalented it to gas in a car. He said, a car needs gas to run. Gas doesn't need to take over and demand what the car does and where it goes. And that's what food is doing. Well, when's my next meal? What am I eating next? What are, and so food focused instead of food just meeting a nourishment. And I'm just using that as an example. I'm being very open here, very open and pleasant with you with what God's dealing with me. Because he said, you had a grip on that, Lori. You had a grip on that. And you felt the healing in your body. Now you're asking for healing, Lord. My knees ache, I got this, I got this. And he says, you need to take some ownership for what's yours. What have you done that is not in line with what I've called you to do with your temple? Because how your temple is and how you present your joy, how you present that, people see me and you. So what are they seeing? More you or more me? So I had started thinking that. And then when Wes hits this message, and Wes spends the whole second part of the message talking about what part of your wall needs to be rebuilt, needs to be restructured, needs to be taken a look at and say, wait, well, this, I let this go. I need to rebuild this. Sometimes you need to take it all the way to the ground and rebuild it. Sometimes you just need to give it the attention that it needs to get to where it needs to be. So I started thinking this, and I'm thinking on this. And so last night, my husband and I, we just prayed, and I said, Lord, just as we prayed together, we said, Lord, just reveal to us the parts of our wall that needs to be restored, what needs to be restored. And lo and behold, I get up this morning, and um, I come by the scripture verse again about the fruits of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit that it talks about it is the, the one fruit that's interesting to me because people don't think of it as a fruit of the Spirit. And it's self-control. Do you realize self-control is listed as a fruit of the Spirit? Meaning that the Holy Spirit is such a part of you that within you, you have to take control and hand it over to the Spirit, not the flesh. The flesh and the Spirit are constantly at battle. And your Spirit has to tell your flesh, Stop! Stop. In my spirit, I know this is what's right for me. And that's where that self-discipline comes in. It's not self, ourself. It's aligning ourself disciplinely with the spirit. I'm going to take self and instead of aligning it with flesh, I'm going to align it with spirit. And that's where that strength comes from. So I'm thinking on that. That's my morning devotion. I go to school and my group of prayer ladies that I talk tell you about that we're 
from all over, but we, um, we each of us take a turn the one day a week just to fast and pray with each other. And she posted this verse and she said, she challenged us. She said, I want you to go back and look at Isaiah 58 and read it for yourself and pray this with our pastor. And it's actually talking about, do you fast just because it's routine? Is this just a routine for you? Or are you really doing it because of what God has called you to do? And so he goes into this and Isaiah 58 is so strong. Um, if I look here, the beginning is talking about how, what are you really doing it for? But then at six, chapter verse six, he talks about what he wants. And he says, now this kind of fasting I want is free from freeing those who are wrongly imprisoned and lightening the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and let them remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who are in need. Do not hide from the rel do not hide from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn. Your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then, then you will call the Lord and he will answer. Yes, I'm right here. He will quickly reply. Then he goes on and he repeats it again. And then this is the part that it's, that catches me in the next couple of verses again, that aligns with what I was reading or that God had put on my heart that was like, ah, screaming my name at me. It says, feed the hungry and help those in trouble. When your light will shine out from the darkness and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon, the Lord will guide you continually giving you water when you are dry and restoring, there's our word, your strength. Restoring your self-control. Now wait, it's coming. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring, overflowing spring. Some of you, and this is where God was like, Lori, hello, are you catching this repeated theme? Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as the rebuilder of walls and the restorer of homes. God said, Lori, we're going to rebuild this wall. We're going to realign your temple. You've gotten a little slack with this prayer porch that you committed to me. You've been slack and what you're putting in your body. You have been slack with your study time. You've been slack with your Shabbat. Sure you take Shabbat, but you take more Shabbat reading your own books than you do Shabbat in my book. Ah, yeah, I saw some holes in my wall. I saw some holes in my wall. So it's my time to start like Nehemiah and God, forgive me. Forgive me for falling short. Forgive me for minimizing my focus. Forgive me for justifying why it's okay for me to slack. No, summer's not a time for slackers. Summer's a wonderful time to take on a building project. This is my time to start rebuilding. How about you? What's your wall look like? Maybe you need to assess things and see where we're at. I don't know about you, but I've got to start building. I've got to start some reconstruction. So come on along. I'd love to have company. We can rebuild together. Join me on the prayer porch or join me in the word. Let me know what God's saying to you because that's how iron sharpens iron. Have a great day. It's been good talking to you on the porch. See you tomorrow.